Coach Gregor, uh, morning, Andrew. You've seen the Leafs quite a lot. Uh, what's the, the top of the priority list for the Jets in this two-game set? Uh, make them defend as much as possible, I think. Uh, you know, they're obviously dynamic off the rush. Um, you know, they especially if they get all zone possession, they're pretty dangerous in some of their movement, getting their deactivated. So um, limit those rush opportunities. And then, uh, you know, control the uh, control the middle of the ice. Kind of, if they do start to get that motion, kind of leave it to the outside and make sure we're picking up sticks and bodies in front of the net, letting Helly see everything. We'll go next to Paul Friesen from the Winnipeg Sun. Go ahead, Paul. Andrew, you've probably seen the, the story surrounding Robin Leonard's comments. Uh, just wondering about uh, the two issues here. Uh, competitive balance between teams that, you know, can't, uh, get, uh, can't get the vaccinations yet, and those who can and the mental health of players who need a break from the isolation. Um, how do you weigh those two? Um, I don't really, I don't know. I, I don't really see it as a competitive advantage. If a guy can go out to dinner, uh, see some friends and he's been vaccinated, then um, I don't, I, <laughs> from our perspective where we can't really do much in Canada, I would hope that the guys who have gone through the vaccination that they can go and live their lives the, the, the way they normally do. Um, so I don't really see that as a competitive balance and, um, you know, obviously the mental health thing is, has impacted a lot of people, pretty much everyone, I would say in some, in some shape or form, the isolation has probably been brutal for, for pretty much everyone. So I think the, the mental health is probably the biggest thing right now. So, um, you know, you do what you can for, for yourself and your close friends and, and whatnot and try and be there for them. But, um, yeah, especially if someone's already been vaccinated, I, I, they should be able to do what they want. We'll go next to Jason Bell from the Winnipeg Free Press. Go ahead, Jason. Hey, Andrew. Uh, you know, your minutes are obviously up, and, and, and I wonder what 45 games feels like you to you this year uh, as opposed to other years with all the factors that you just talked about, in fact. Um, and also, you know, the benefits of having a couple of days off this week and then two good days of practice. I mean, where does the, the, the sort of the balance of, of rest or recovery over practice too? Yeah, I mean, I think I learned a little bit more about like my minutes were up pretty good last year too, uh, just with all, all the injuries we had and everything like that. So um, yeah, I mean, I think my, my body feels pretty good right now, um, especially after the little break. I think that was huge for our team, you know, might not just show up tonight or in the next few games, but I think over the long course, um, it's, it'll help us a lot as we get into, you know, the last few games of the regular season in the playoffs. So I think that was a huge kind of mental reset for our team. Just went through the, the, the road ringer. Uh, so it's uh, definitely good to have some days at home and then got to get back on track as soon as possible. We'll go next to Murata Tash from the Athletic. Go ahead, Murata. Hi, Andrew. Um, we, we make a big deal, and, and rightfully so, of Toronto's offense, their defense that jump into the play. And you guys have to cover off on that. And if a defense comes low, that means forwards get low. And I'm, I'm wondering, coming out of that, when you do get the stop and guys are kind of in that man-to-man, -man, they've, they've moved quite a bit, how that affects the breakout and moving in the other direction at, at the end of all that? Yeah, it can. I think... Uh especially if kind of like the center ends up kind of getting the puck low and like the D is net front, you kind of need that D to slide into that center hole or else he's kind of jammed and doesn't have really a play except for up the wall. So, um, yeah, I think that's, and it's something that honestly you can take advantage of it. Like we saw Shife get the breakaway, um, in Toronto when their D kind of overactivated and whatnot. So, um, if we, if we're able to handle it well, and then just as soon as the puck gets stopped and we're able to kind of come support, um, it can kind of lead to rushes the other way. So uh, yeah, I think good defense leads the leads the offense. And um, there's definitely opportunities for us to take advantage of when they get over aggressive. We'll go next to Kelly Moore from CGOB. Go ahead, Kelly. Thank you, Gregor. And uh, good morning, Andrew. Uh, we saw a little bit of it in the uh, Edmonton game on Saturday where uh, the line matching seemed to be a little bit more prevalent. So a two-part question, Andrew, uh, how much are you guys planning on tipping your hand uh, before the playoffs start? And is that something that is on the to-do list to get this team comfortable uh, with uh, working around the line matching and not getting the rotation of the lines too skewed? 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's a question for Paul more so than me. Um, but I do know that, especially now that I'm back with Laos, I feel like we're we'll get somewhat heavy on the match. I don't know. Uh, you know, it'll change between teams and between you know what they got going on their back end and whatnot. So it's not um, it's not going to be hard hard. I don't think, but um, I think that we're probably trying to figure out exactly what we're going to look like going into the playoffs and still trying to um, have places that we can go to if things aren't going well or whatnot. So I think it's it's kind of always a fluid situation, but um, I think the success that Laos and I have had together with Appy this year, I think it'll be, we'll definitely be looking at doing that. We'll go next to Sarah Lesky from TSN. Go ahead, Sarah. Hey, Andrew, you mentioned about the playoffs and kind of building towards it. What do you think the emphasis or what would you like to be in these final 11 or so games going into it? What point of emphasis for your group? Um, I would say like playing pretty connected. I think uh, sometimes we can get a little stretched out in our offensive game. I think especially coming up the ice, like we kind of can stretch a little bit too much or we're not – we're not supporting the puck the way we should coming up the ice. So I think that's, that's one thing, especially in playoff hockey, you're not going to get stretch passes. It's going to be battles in battles out. So um, I think we need to make sure that we're supporting the puck coming up the ice as, as best as we can. And then um, defensively con kind of control in the middle of the ice. Uh, those are the two biggest things. And I think um, if we can do those and then, you know, take advantage of our chances and then, you know, just continue to build that belief in the room. I think we're going to have a good feeling going into the playoffs. And final question back to Murat Atesh from the Athletic Go ahead, Murat. Thanks, Gregor. Uh, Andrew, I wanted to go back to the topic of mental health. You, you said that, you know, everyone has been affected, and, and I thought that that was powerful. I'm wondering what it is that you guys are doing, whether it's player-driven or organization-driven or resources-driven, just to, to look out for each other a little bit extra this year. Um, I, I don't know if there's any like one thing. I mean, I think it's just like, we're grateful that we do get to come to the rink and talk in the locker room and be around each other. Uh, and then on the road, obviously too, I think, I think it's more, we've kind of created a, uh, an environment where, you know, it's not talked about on a daily basis, but I think it's well known that, you know, if anyone's ever struggling or going through something, you know, he's got five, 10, 15 guys that he can rely on in the room to, to talk through something or, you know, the staff and whether it's the trainers, the equipment staff or the coaching staff, like they're always, you know, all ears. So I don't necessarily think it's something that, you know, is preached on a daily basis to take care of your mental health, take care of your mental health. I think that's kind of a given for everyone at this point. Um, I just do, I do think that the environment and the culture that we've created in the locker room um, has, has allowed guys that if they are struggling to come to, you know, their closest friend on the team or, you know, a group of guys and talk about situations, you know, outside the room, inside the room, um, on the ice, off the ice, what's going on at home, uh, what's going on with their families. So I don't know if it's any one thing in particular like that. I just think it's the, the type of people that we have in the room that have provided a safe environment for everyone. 